it felt a lot like the first Celtics game. The first time they played the Celtics, it was in Boston. It was Thanksgiving week. Mm-hmm. It was the it was just a three game road trip, but three games in four nights. It was the first major East Coast trip of the season, Thanksgiving week, like I said, and that you finished it off in Boston, and it just kind of seemed like the Kings because they ran with Boston for about two and a half quarters in that game. Yeah, and then it just kind of fell apart. And that was it. Well, by golly, that kind of sounds like the other game, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. And no, it does. It, and it's no coincidence that. They were playing the second of a back-to-back after playing in Utah the night before. You know, uh, totally. And then, obviously, that's not an excuse. But my point here is, from an outside perspective, wouldn't it have been great to see the Kings kind of play the Celtics with a little bit more rest? Yeah, and and even kind of going away from the Celtics, but staying on it, it's like you said, it was the second night of a back-to-back against Boston. It's like... Man, you really needed to win that Utah game. It was the first night, you know, before his Celtics back-to-back game, and they they didn't have Markinen, Sexton, or uh, Clarkson. Taylor it's Horton like, Tucker, baby. <laughs> Taylor Horton Tucker. It's such that game, that game was frustrating. You, it's considering how well they were playing out of the break. They were perfect on their road trip until that point. So, I mean, it's Celtics game. You know, I can swallow that loss for sure. It was it's the Celtics, but man, that that Jazz game was like ugh. that first quarter was just awful, and it was just you know much of a factor. The Kings kind of caught up, but at the end they couldn't. And you know you can credit a lot of that to that that bad first quarter. Yeah, I mean in a, in a similar way to how Boston made the Kings pay for every mistake they made. I mean they committed. How many turnovers? And they too many. Yeah, yeah. Domas fourteen for twenty-one yeah. points off yeah. of it, and they only, you know, Boston only committed five, and the Kings scored six off of it. You know, and Boston took advantage of everything. I mean, I think it was really only the second quarter that they really had the offensive rebounds going. But damn, they still finished with seventeen second chance points. You know, they had ten in the second quarter alone, and then you know. Uh, they kind of the Kings patched up at least on the glass a little bit, but it just seemed like they were there to make them pay. And then I guess my point here is like the Utah game shows that it's like you got to come out ready to just swing right away because no matter how good your offense is, you see how it can get constricted. And that really like against that Jazz team, if you take away the Jazz ability to constrict the inside, because the Kings only scored 40 points in the paint, which is not good. <laughs> you you want to get those paint touches. You want to get those paint scores. And uh, I think the Utah Jazz, it, 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 in a way, kind of let them know that they have to come out as sharp as can be without making mistakes. Because no matter how confident you are that you can make up for those mistakes, you know, teams like Utah are going to go ahead and still play hard and not make it easy on you. It's always going to be difficult. And then the real wake up call is when you play a damn good team like Boston. Mm-hmm. There's they're not going to catch you any slack. No. So the Kings are getting to a point where, I mean, they kind of are, and it seems like they understand it. Like Malik Monk was like, and you know, these teams have just been there. They understand what it takes. Talking about Milwaukee and Boston specifically, and it's just like the Kings are coming to this point where they kind of know they have to play as close to perfect as possible. They've been saying it all year. They really had the right attitude about it but it's like it's time to do it yeah it's time to show up i mean that boston game it's it's i know boston's one of the better teams in the league and they're an eastern conference team but like that game it made me kind of nervous going into the playoffs because regardless of what the clippers are doing this year or you know the warriors even it's like these are teams that we might face in the playoffs with plenty of playoff experience and are they going to do the same thing as the Celtics did to us? Like, I mean, we have very little playoff experience. So I just like when we play these good teams, these title contending teams, like the Bucks and the Celtics, it's like, you know, they're showing us why they're favorites to win the titles. And I'm not saying the Clippers or Warriors are, but they definitely have the talent mm-hmm. to do it. So, yeah, 